Numbers have been set for the 2023 deer gun season. Today we're visiting with Wildlife Division Chief Casey Anderson and he'll go over all the details. I'm Mike Anderson with the North Dakota Game and Fish Department. Casey, how many deer gun licenses available this year compared to last year? Yeah, so we'll have just over 53,000 licenses available this year, a little over 10,000 reduction compared to last year. And why the reduction? So yeah, we, multiple reasons really. Um, the biggest thing is we're coming off of a pretty bad winter, obviously. I mean, it was bad for everybody who was living in North Dakota. Um, but. You know, it depends on where you're at across the state. Winter wasn't equally as bad, even though most most places had enough of it. But we did have some winter die-offs and things, and and you know, a lot of it is due to you know how those deer came into winter as far as their body condition. And so when you when you think back a couple years, like everything compounds itself when you're talking about wildlife, right? So you think back a couple years, and we had a couple years of pretty bad drought. We kind of came out of it last year, about halfway through the summer, but you know, to really build up those fat reserves and things that carry an animal through a winter, um, it takes exceptional habitat to do that. And so then you, you compile that with a six month long winter, you know, that, that was pretty severe in, in many places. And, and uh, we, had, we had a considerable amount of die off in some of the areas of the state. Mostly, like if you look at Bismarck, east and south was the worst, um, but it, we had plenty of winter kill throughout the whole state. Casey, how do you guys come up with the numbers? Yeah, so of course we do our aerial surveys, which most people are familiar with. Um, blessing and a curse, we were able to do the entire state this year. We had enough snow on the landscape to do our whitetail winter aerial surveys across the whole state and you know that, that roughly encompasses just over 25% of the state's surface area that our guys fly with airplanes and count deer. Um, and so then we can compare that to the previous time they were counted um, or the previous few times they were counted to see which direction kind of the population is trending. Then we also use our harvest surveys that we send out to hunters. That's why it's important, you know, for folks to send their, their surveys back to us. Um, so that gets put in there. And then just what our guys are seeing across the landscape during the winter, um, whether it's, you know, what our wardens are seeing out there, what our wildlife division staff or fishery staff are seeing as they're traversing across the country. Um, and then we do deal with a lot of, um, times when deer are causing problems. They get in the wrong place, um, especially in a winter like this. And, you know, we can we could all thank the landowners for their tolerance for, for deer being around. A lot of landowners want to do something to protect their livestock feed supplies. Um, and so they work with us and we have a lot of ways that um, we can help reduce that or, or even exclude deer from that. Um, but really, you know, across the landscape, the winter got pretty tough and so deer were, were congregating to where there was something sticking out of the snow essentially and so we need we need more habitat on the landscape to be able to bounce back from something like this and sustain deer throughout a winter like this. Casey, this bad winter, does it affect the deer's reproduction? It can, yeah. You know, winter gets bad enough that they're, you know, of course these does are, are bred coming into winter from the rut and so they're carrying a fawn and they're you know, the harder winter gets early, the more likely they are to reabsorb that fawn or even abort that fawn, depending on the stages that, that they're in in gestation. And so, you know, it really depends on the hard winter um, and how long it stretches out and how early it starts, have, at which this year we have both, long and early as far as the winter goes. And so, so yeah, we expect um, reproduction to be reduced. Uh, time will tell here as we move into the summer months, but. Casey, you you guys manage the deer population by deer units. Explain that a little bit. So yeah, our, our deer units, which are set up for our, our essentially our rifle tags. Um, you know, those are the tags that really we use to adjust based on population. 
we really have to think forward when we're giving out licenses for our rifle tags because we unitize those so that we can biologically manage the herds and those units are, are set up in kind of habitat regions and then broken into units that have um, kind of a big enough unit where you you can manage that herd. Um, maybe habitat types kind of separate those units a little bit. But, and it also spreads hunters out too um, across the landscape so that you can, two things, you can spread hunters out so they're not bumping elbows all the time, but you also spread hunters out to make sure you get your harvest spread out across the state that way. Sure. Let's move into individual deer populations here. Let's talk white-tailed deer first. Uh, we were coming off in 2021, a major EHD outbreak in central North Dakota. Explain that a little bit along with this winter. Mm -hmm. So the EHD outbreak that we had in 2021 really hit hard along the Missouri River um, and then west to some extent. Um, in the western side of the state, we have dealt with the EHD more often and so it wasn't quite the quite the uh, impact probably that it was along the Missouri River. And so, for example, like 3C last year, uh, we did not give out any whitetail licenses. And that's gonna be the case again this year. Of course, winter didn't help those deer rebound, you know, as we came through this winter. And so, um, just trying to make sure that, you know, we're not over harvesting so that we can get some rebound in there, but you know, realistically, the speed of this rebound is all dependent on habitat and a little help from Mother Nature. Um, but, you know, back in, say, 96, 97, when we had a bad winter like this, I mean, this one didn't, I can't remember if it broke the record or not, but we were pretty close. Um, we bounced back a lot faster than we probably will this time. Because, because of the amount of habitat on the landscape and some people We'll look at this winter and go, well, a lot of that habitat was just grass, say, in CRP. But that grass on the landscape catches a lot of snow that doesn't fill into the cattail sloughs or the tree rows and things. And when the cattail slough and the tree row maybe or maybe isn't still there, but if it's still there and all that grass is gone, it used to catch snow, those tree rows, those cattails fill in much faster and just make winter conditions worse earlier. And so some parts of the state, like we talked about, whitetail populations did okay this winter. Yeah, like up in our northwest part of the state for sure, uh, there was less winter. Um, and it was kind of a northwest to southeast gradient really as winter went along. Um, and so yeah, we'll have, and, and in some areas there'll still be pretty good pockets of, of whitetail deer. That's obviously why we're giving out some licenses still. But Okay, let's move in. You guys just finished your spring mule deer surveys. Explain. So the guys flew, can fly the mule deer surveys in after the snow melts. Um, the white rumps on mule deer stick out really good in the Badlands and our mule deer units and so that's typically when they fly it. And so they just got done with it and we did show a pretty good decrease in mule deer in some units. Um, and that was really, uh, um, the less decrease was in the south and it was a more a higher decrease as we went north. Um, so overall about 29% reduction in mule deer populations across the Badlands um, with varying degrees across you know the deer units as we flew in that area. And because extreme weather conditions again. Yeah extreme weather conditions and just you know the, the extended period of the winter is really what gets them. You know even last year for example they got hit by that late storm that we got um, a year ago in April. But not to the extent that a storm like that would have done this year because we really didn't have much winter last year in 2021, 22, 22, 23, different story. But. What's gonna get this population, both whitetail and mule deer, heading in the right direction? So it'll be, you know, it'll be some help from Mother Nature, of course, if we happen to get you know, uh, average winter next year or worse, like we did this year, um, that'll definitely play a role, but it's habitat on the landscape, you know, and we, we talk about winter habitat, which obviously was pretty evident this year, where it was and where it wasn't. Um, but also, if you don't have fawning habitat, you don't raise any fawns to take over, you know, to come up with a net. So even if mother nature helps us out when we get easy winters, 
but it's a struggle for deer to raise fawns um, because they can't hide them or things like that and they're getting predated, it's not going to speed anything up. Um, and then of course when you look at you know what kind of habitats could be out there, what kind of habitats are a natural food source? Um, because a lot of deer you know that succumb to winter at some level either they couldn't keep their body temperature up because they weren't getting the right food sources or enough of the food sources and so essentially they kind of ran out of groceries in some cases um, but they maybe died of starvation or maybe died of just exposure because of how they maintain their body temperature through the activity of their rumen. Okay. Um, when is the deadline for this year's application process and are there things people can do to have better odds of getting a license? So I don't know if I want to give away my secrets, but June 7th is the deadline. Um, but obviously, you know, there's units where we have more licenses. Um, you know, everybody wants a buck tag, so that's going to be your hardest one to get. Um, you know, and so if, you, if you're willing to travel or willing to get, you know, take a doe license or an antlerless license, you know, you, you definitely increase your odds. A lot of great information, Casey. Thank you.